I want to be sure to invite you to our upcoming Prophecy Conference. It's going to be in wonderful, beautiful Colorado Springs this August 6th and 7th and 8th. Boy, I tell you, August here where I live is a hot month, and Colorado Springs is a great, cool place. We're going to be in a lovely hotel, uh, the Marriott there on uh, Tech Center Drive. We're going to have an incredible lineup of speakers. Many of them helped us in Florida. Uh, some of the headliners are going to be Bob Cornuke, Jerome Corsi, Pastor Billy Crone, Pastor Russ Dizdar, Joseph Farah, uh, very well-known, recognizable names. We would love for you to join us. The registration cost is only $90 for the conference. What a deal. Three days of solid biblical prophetic teaching uh, and a chance together with believers from all over. You need to call us and register for this, and we would love to have you do that. The number is 800-475-1111 or prophecyofthenews.com on our website. Thank you. Welcome to Prophecy of the News. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. Our guest is Jonathan Kahn. Great to be back. Hey, we've put two uh, shows under the belt. We're yes. doing a third one mm -hmm. on yeah. your latest DVD release, The Mystery of the Sh Shemitah. Shemitah Unlocked. Exactly. Yes. It's, yeah. uh, it's an incredible uh, mm. array of new material mm. Mm. adding to what you'd uncovered. So yeah. Yeah. kind of that maybe if somebody's jumping in midstream and didn't see yeah. the other two, yeah. kind of tell us, Jonathan, yeah. what the Shemitah is. Shemitah is a, a, an ancient mystery that lies behind everything from the Bible of the seven-year mystery of God that lies behind everything from the rise and fall of the economy, the stock market, world uh, nations, when global cataclysms comes, and when it gives the timing of end time prophecy, it's so specific, it actually gives dates, um, and it is affecting our lives, has been affecting our lives, will affect our lives. Uh, we are in a Shemitah right now, so that's why the, there's an urgency for this right now, so yes. Yeah. This, this is a Hebrew word that means the year of release. Well, yeah, it means release, but it also means, it also uh -huh. means Shemitah also means the fall, it can mean the shaking, and the collapse, and it is linked to that. It's linked to the shaking of, of the world system, all those things, and when nations fall and rise. So yes, it, it's all those things. It's, it was to be a blessing, but it became a sign of judgment in the case of ancient Israel. So could it be in effect today? And we've looked at it, how it's been behind all these things. And the other thing is that it's actually getting intense. It's, it's actually intensifying. The last two cycles have been more intense, more uncannily exact, I'll give you an example. In the year 2001, when the Shemitah reaches its peak, and on the last day of the biblical Shemitah, it's called Elul 29, all debts and credits wiped away, financial accounts are wiped clean on this Elul 29 wipeout day, wipeout day. Well, in, in 2001, 9-11 comes, and 9-11 causes the, the Wall Street to collapse. So it's interesting, 9-11, uh -huh. that means the timing of 9-11 is even part of this mystery. It caused it to collapse on September 17th. Well, September 17th, you had the greatest point crash in, in American history to that day. And what happens? When did it happen? It happened not only at the end of the Shemitah, at the end of the seven-year cycle. It happened on the exact biblical day appointed by God, Elul 29, to wipe away the financial accounts. Sign of judgment of a nation falling away from God. So that happened, September 17th was Elul 29, the exact, not just Elul 29, but the exact one appointed by God. So it all happens, wipes away. Now, what happens if you go to the next Shemitah, the 2008? Well, 2008, you have the next great collapse, the great recession, everything collapsing in September. This is seven years to the month, to the week. But, not, but then you have the peak of the collapse. It happens September 29th, 2008, the greatest ever point crash in world history. There's a mystery, though, behind it, and I believe we have a clip. The collapse reaches its peak at the end of September 2008 with what becomes the greatest single-day crash in Wall Street history. That morning, in the New York Stock Exchange, the opening bell refuses to sound. Even Wall Street takes it as an omen. The stock market crashes over 700 points. On what date did the greatest crash in Wall Street history take place? It is September 29th, 2008. But the ancient biblical calendar holds a different name. The greatest stock market collapse in world history takes place on the 29th day of Elul, the exact day appointed from ancient times for the nullifying of the financial realm, the wiping out of financial accounts. Elul 29, the day of the Shemitah, the sign of judgment against a nation that has driven God out of its life. The judgment that specifically strikes the nation's economic and financial realm. 
the two greatest collapses in stock market history up to those dates each took place on the same exact day on the ancient biblical calendar. And they just happened to each take place on the precise biblical day that's specifically ordained to touch the nation's financial realm and to wipe clean its financial accounts from ancient times, the day of financial nullifying. And it's not only Elul 29, but it can only be one Elul 29 in seven years that can constitute the day of the Shemitah, the day of nullification. So on which Elul 29 did the greatest stock market collapse take place in the year 2008? It happened on the once in seven years Elul 29, the exact one that constitutes the day of the Shemitah and the greatest crash of 2001. When did it take place? It happened on the once in seven years of Luke 29 that also constituted the Bible's day of the Shemitah. So when all across the world, observant Jews are symbolically canceling out their debts to each other, the greatest wiping out of financial accounts in history is taking place on Wall Street and sweeping across the globe. According to the ancient mystery, the financial nullification has to take place seven years apart from the one before or after. So the two greatest financial nullifications in Wall Street history up to their dates take place seven years apart. Not only on Elul 29, but seven years apart, seven exact biblical years apart, down to the exact season, the exact month, the exact date, the exact hour, the exact minute, the exact second, the exact closing bell. No human hand in the world could have orchestrated such a thing. It required the working together of every financial transaction and interaction in the world. It even required that 9-11 had to have happened exactly when it did, as it was 9-11 that caused Wall Street to collapse in 2001 on the exact ancient appointed day. Okay, well, that was fascinating, Jonathan. And I remember when that happened in 2008, and yes. I, I heard people afterwards say that they said we were hours away from a global meltdown. And we had, and yeah, and there was a global collapse. I mean, it's amazing. And yet it could, yeah. And that, and the thing is, interesting, the, in the, the mystery of the Shemitah, the key number is seven, the seventh year. And so that, that, uh, that Elul 29 is the end, is the, the crowning of the seventh year. Could there be fingerprints of, of this mystery on that, the number seven? How much was wiped out? How much percent was wiped out in the, in the Elul 29 crash of 2001? Seven percent. Uh -huh. How much was wiped out in 2008? Seven percent. How many hours does the, the crash take? Seven hours on, on, the seven, on the day of the seventh, on the eve of the seventh month. And how many points are wiped out in that greatest crash ever, 2008? Seven, seven, seven. I mean, Wall Street, it's seven, okay. seven, seven. I mean, the, the, you talk about the fingerprints. And That's fascinating to yeah, me. There's so much. And so the thing is, it's increasing. And now we are, find ourselves, when is the next Shemitah? I've been saving my question yes. all this time for yeah. these three shows. Yeah. We're in 2015. Yes. And... The Shemitah has begun to, in 2000, began at the end of 2014, end of September, and now goes to September 2015. Now, first thing, because we're going to talk about where we are, where we're going. I give, this, I give this my caution, kind of famous caution. God doesn't have to do anything. You can't put God in a box. He doesn't right. have to do it the same way. He doesn't have to do anything. However, at the same time, I'd be cautious. I would be ready. I'd be aware. Now, I believe a great shaking is coming to America and the world. Does it have to happen at the parameter of the Shemitah or that climax? No, it doesn't. But I believe it's coming anyway, but I believe we need to be aware because there, this, the, if you look at the last two, not that, if you look at the last seven cycles from there's been a crash every time there's been a Shemitah, but now the last two have been exact on the date. So the pattern of the Shemitah is that the, that the dramatic uh, crashing, if it's going to happen in that cycle, doesn't generally happen at the beginning. It generally happens at the end, during okay. which makes sense okay. generally. So, you know, we had this, and, but in the last Shemitah we had, there were actually foreshadows of the end at the beginning. When the Shemitah started in 2007, there was the first bank collapse on that day. Now, that, at the end of that Shemitah comes the, all the collapses, financial system. But could there have been foreshadows at the beginning of this one of what could happen at the end? Well, I'm, I'm just submitting. It doesn't have to, but here's what happened. At the beginning of this Shemitah, when that week hits, 
Wall Street starts reeling violently. It starts going crazy. Destabilize for one month. I don't know if you followed Wall Street, but started at the time uh -huh. of Shemitah. The, the, and the, there was the, one of the signs of the judgment can happen in this way is, sh is shaking, literally an earthquake. An earthquake strikes America six point over six on the Richter scale at, the, at that time. When does it happen? September 25th on the opening day of the Shemitah. Also, you, you, know, we, you know, one of the signs that can be of judgment is plague or 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 uh -huh. pestilence? Well, you, we were we had that whole thing with the Ebola. The the it manifests in America. When is this? When is it a manifest on September twenty fifth, the opening day of the Shemitah? You have Wall Street collapsing. You have an earthquake, and you have you have that on the same day. We also have. I won't go into it now because unless we have time. But you have this biblical, ancient biblical sign involving the seventh cow, which happens on the same day. We won't go into it now. But all these things start now. Now also, the the Shemitah means the fall. Can mean the fall. Well, I've warned this for a long time, and probably when I was with you before, I warned that if uh -huh. America does not come back to God, the American age as we know it will collapse. The Shemitah means collapse. Well, here's, here's what happens. In the first week of the Shemitah, America has been the number one nuclear power on Earth. In the first week of the Shemitah, it ends. Russia becomes the number one superpower. It, it falls from the number one. In the second week of the Shemitah, something happens. I, we, we spoke about the American age. It began in 1871 when America supplants the British Empire, becomes the strongest economic power on earth. After that, it becomes the financial center. After that, it becomes the, the, the world military power, the superpower, all those things. But the American age that began in 1871, in the second week of the Shemitah, the Shemitah ends it. It comes to an end. It comes to an end. America is no longer, has fallen from being the number one economic power on earth. That crown has passed to China. Happened the second week of the Shemitah. Now, if nothing else happened, that alone is gigantic, and that's going to continue. The Economic, military. Yeah, gigantic. Sur surpassed. Or in the first two weeks. But then uh -huh. there's also a moral part of this, because there's another type of fall. Actually, you know, 1973 was the year of the Shemitah. That year was, Roe versus, was when America made a fateful decision to legalize the killing of its unborn children, a sin which led to the destruction of ancient Israel. Well, here in ninth, here the Shemitah of this present Shemitah, here's what happened. In the first weeks of the Shemitah, the Supreme Court d makes a decision not to, not to hear the cases defending marriage throughout America. What happens is, because of that one decision, the number of states that had ended the biblical de definition of marriage goes from 17 minority, big minority, I mean, I mean small, small minority, goes from 17 to 37. It sweeps the nation. This transformation has never been anything like it. Sweeps the nation within just a few weeks, starting with a few weeks of the Shemitah, and then as the Shemitah goes, they talk about fall. Uh -huh. Now, we are at a point where the Supreme Court is going to hear, and a case is coming, that will decide the future of marriage as we know it. You know, and this is where we're going. America, here, putting it all together, America is rapidly, rapidly falling from God. Rapidly. Um, the, our apostasy is deepening every day in, in speed and acceleration. Talk about a fall. And this year has been the key year now with all these things, uh, the year of the Shemitah. And then we're going to have this decision coming up, which is, which if it goes that, if it strikes down marriage as we know it, this is the, one of the, the greatest falls ever in our history, if not. And, and there's much ramifications here, but all these things are converging. America, one of the saving graces is that we still supported Israel. This year has been the greatest deterioration in the history of America and Israel of our relations, where, uh, where the American government, the White House, the administration has been attacking uh, ben Benjamin Netanyahu as if more than an enemy, more than uh -huh. an enemy, and has said, we, will, we are going to reassess our relationship with Israel. That's gigantic, that we've threatened that we may abandon Israel at the United Nations when a vote comes up for a Palestinian state. That is gigantic, because the Abrahamic Covenant says, that whatever you do to Israel will be done to you. So the thing is that, so, so we have so much, the harbingers are continuing. I know we're going to just, the harbingers are yeah. still manifesting. Everything's happening at the same time that that tower is just being completed, that tower at ground zero. I'll just say this. I was called to go to Washington. God, this is just recently. On the day that, that the Supreme Court heard the case, April 28th, heard the case about marriage. I was asked to go, and then the next day, I appeared before members of Congress and leaders to speak. This is a gathering that took place, was started because of the harbinger. And so I gave a prophetic word to 
to the to the to I believe that was for that moment because I believe we are at a prophetic hour. If I this agree. goes ahead, we we if this goes ahead with the Supreme Court, it's going to affect every Christian, every church, every religious school. Persecution. It's not only you know it says woe to those who call evil good and good evil. So as if a nation calls evil good, it will call good evil. Well, and if this is handed down June thirtieth, as some are saying, you and I could be criminals in July. Amazing. Yeah. In our own nation. Amazing. And so, you, yeah, you were witnessing, th I mean, li we are witnessing th unprecedented things we have never witnessed before. Right. And, you know, people who are into prophecy, well, don't, don't you know, you, when you look at all this, look at this, because this is happening every single day. It's affecting every one of us. So be ready. I would say be ready for shaking, be ready for persecution, but be ready for also God's hand. And I believe God wants revival. So I believe we have the clip of the actual speech that was given in the, in the halls of Congress on Capitol Hill the day after the Supreme Court heard, heard this, and, on the, and just about the anniversary of when George Washington, on the first day of America as a nation, gave a warning, what happens if America ever departs from the ways of God? Let's hear it. It is April 29th, 2015. 226 years ago this day, George Washington readied himself for the first ever presidential inauguration to take place the following day, the day that America as we know it came into existence with the president's hand resting on the word of God. That day would conclude with America's first government gathering in prayer to dedicate the nation's future to God. A century and a half earlier, another seminal event took place on the same day, on April 29, 1607, the voyagers on the Susan Constant, the Discovery and the Godspeed gathered together in prayer at Cape Henry to set a wooden cross in the sands of Virginia Beach and to dedicate the new civilization to the will and the purposes of God. America's biblical foundation would be affirmed and reaffirmed over and over again by its forefathers, from the pilgrims of the Mayflower to the Puritans of Massachusetts Bay to the leaders of the first American colonies who declared publicly and in writing that the new commonwealth had come into existence solely for the glory and purposes of God. No historian can rewrite that, no president can expunge that, and if a thousand angels swore in a thousand Bibles that this was not the case, it would in no way alter the fact that this American civilization was conceived, established, dedicated, and founded on a biblical cornerstone. America was brought into existence for the will and the purpose of God. On this night, over 200 years ago, George Washington held in his hand the first ever presidential address. In that address was a prophetic warning. It was this, the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself hath ordained. In other words, if America should ever turn away from God and his ways, if it should ever disregard his eternal rules of order and right, then his blessings, the smiles of heaven, would be removed from the land. It was an ancient warning. It had been given in Hebrew words by the prophets to the kingdom of Israel. But Israel turned away from God and disregarded his eternal rules of order and right. They drove God out of their government, out of their public squares, out of their culture, out of the lives of their children. They worshiped idols and served other gods. They celebrated immorality and they persecuted righteousness. They lifted up their children on the altars of foreign gods. And the blessings of God were removed from the land and replaced with judgment. It is two and a half thousand years later and America has made the same mistake. We too have turned away from God. We too have driven him out of the government, out of our public square, out of our culture, out of the lives of our children. We too have profaned the sacred and sanctified the profane. And we too have killed our most innocent, over 55 million of our unborn children, and our collective hands are covered with blood. What we were warned never to do, we now have done. And now we gather in the city named after the one who gave us the prophetic warning. And yesterday in this city, in the building that sits across from this hill, the justices of the Supreme Court took up their places on the bench to decide whether America should strike down the biblical and historic definition of marriage. The very fact that, that an event should take place as such is a sign in itself that um, this is the America of Washington's warning. It's here. And this day of which he warned is now. We have become a civilization in spiritual schizophrenia, a nation at war against its own foundation. The Supreme Court opens its sessions with the words, God save the United States and this honorable court. But if then, if this honorable court should overrule the word of God and strike down the eternal rules of order and right that heaven itself hath ordained, how then will God save it? Supreme Court justices, can you judge the ways of God? Can you with man-made verdicts overrule the eternal laws of God? 
There is another court and there is another judge, and before him all men and all judges will give account. If a nation's high court should pass judgment on the Almighty, should you then be surprised that the Almighty should pass judgment on the court and that nation? In the book of Jeremiah, it's written, Has a nation ever exchanged its gods? Yet my people have exchanged their glory for that which cannot help them. Let us not pretend as to what we are now doing. We are doing that which Israel did on the altars of Baal. We are exchanging our God for idols, our light for darkness, and our glory for that which cannot save us. Are we ready to risk that which comes on the other side of that exchange, the day when the blessings of heaven are removed from the land? We began with a word from the president of our first nations or the day that he began as president. I now speak a word to the president of our nation's most recent days. Each time I've spoken here, I've asked a question. I'll now answer it. Mr. President, with all respect that is due, what happens if one assumes the presidency by placing his left hand on the word of God and then with his right hand enacts laws that war against the very same word of God on which he laid his hand? Such an act invokes the judgment of the Almighty. To swear an oath on the word of God on which it's written, defend the weak and do not murder, and then to not defend the weak, to not protect the unborn, but instead to advance their murder is to invoke the judgment of the Almighty. To swear an oath on the word of God in which it's written, do not cause your brother to stumble, and then to seek to force those who uphold the word of God to transgress the word of God by partaking in the killing of the unborn and the celebration of sin is to invoke the judgment of the Almighty. And to swear an oath on the word of God in which it's written, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, and then to take part in the leading of a nation away from the eternal rules of order and right that heaven itself hath ordained and against the very word of God on which you laid your hand is to invoke the judgment of the Almighty. When the leaders of ancient Israel turned away from God, when they abolished his precepts and broke his covenant, they did so in the shadow of Moses, whose voice cried out to them in warning. Mr. President, when you address the nation from this house, look up, look up above the senators and the representatives, above the Supreme Court justices and above the invited guests, and you'll see a face, the only full visage in that wall. Looking back at you, it is the face of Moses. And if that face could speak, it would say this, no man can overrule the laws of God, no order can annul the order of God, and no judgment of man can stand against the judgments of God. Invoke not his judgment, but choose life. Lead in the way of repentance. Invoke the grace of God that he might have mercy on this land. We've come to a most critical moment. As Elijah stood on top of Mount Carmel and cried out, to Israel in his hour of decision in between two altars and two gods, his voice now cries out to America and says, choose you this day whom you will serve. 70 years ago, the chaplain of the United States Senate cried out with the same voice and said to this nation, if the Lord be God, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him and go to hell. Tonight, America stands at the crossroads. And as Elijah came to the summit of Mount Carmel to make a declaration, we've come this night to Capitol Hill to declare that our God is not Baal, our God is not Moloch, our God is not government, our God is not money, our God is not power, not pleasure, our God is not political correctness or any other man-made thing. We've come to this hill to declare that there is only one God and he's the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He's the God of Israel and of all nations. He alone is the rock upon which this nation has come into existence. And from this high place, we make this declaration. We will not bow down our knees to Baal. We will not bow down our knees to political correctness. We will not bow down our knees to a morality that as, is as shifting as sand in the wind. We will not bow down our knees to the laws and precepts of rebellion or the sacred cows of moral apostasy. We will not bow down our knees to the idols of man. We will not bow down to Baal. We will bow down our knees only to the Lord our God, come what may, and we will have no other gods before him. For some trust in chariots, some trust in princes, some trust in Supreme Courts, some trust in White Houses, some trust in governments, some trust in Wall Street, some trust in powers, and some trust in idols. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God, in the name above all names, above all kings, above all powers. We will trust in the only name given by which we can be saved. We will trust in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the judge of all judges, the light of the world, the glory of Israel, the foundation stone upon which this nation came into existence, and the only answer, the only chance, and the only hope that America has that it might once again shine with the light of the fire of the presence of the glory of the living God and not go to hell. So help us God. Thank you. 
Very powerful words, Jonathan. Very powerful. Yeah. We I have, sensed we have the people. Lord was upon you. Well, in my weakness, I was physically weak, and that's really, and uh, but I knew that, you know, God will give us open doors. This is he'll, the gospel's not going to stop, and God's going to for those if we will be bold and we will not compromise the truth. God will anoint the eyes of the Lord are looking through the whole earth, looking for the one whose heart is His. He will lift us up. So I encourage everyone here not to be timid. Be hey, bold hey, for yeah. God, and this is the hour. Well, what do you see uh, as as we go forward? And I'll take a moment to talk about. Yeah the availability of this DVD, but uh, just before I do that, what do you see uh, between now and September? Uh, well, again, nothing has to happen, but if it does follow the pattern, then September, <laughs> we would expect, uh, can be a, ver- uh, a shaking month. It's September 13th. It falls on a Sunday, actually. Uh, nothing has to happen, but be aware of the dates. That's a little 29. But the, but the last day the stock market's open is an interesting date. It's September it 11th. It's the anniversary of that. On you know, a Friday. Pe- yeah, <laughs> people are looking at the, you know, the blood moons. Actually, the blood moons correspond with this, and it ends at that same time period as well. Also, sometimes people look at the eclipse of the sun, the darkening of the sun, which is can be a biblical sign. It doesn't have to be. The sun will be darkened on what day? A little 29 the same wipeout day nothing has to happen but in that time but be aware be ready and and either way i'm saying i believe strongly the lord is going to shake this nation and Amen. we need it but it's a nation that will be shaken and i believe we need to be ready but i believe the point of god is to shake that we that that all who will come will come to wake up a sleeping church to cause us to become the people of god we're supposed to be to Amen. be all out on fire for god to cause those who will be saved to come and you know when you're looking for safety know that one hebrew word in hebrew safety is the word yeshua yeshua Amen. is jesus get your life in jesus yeshua and you'll be safe if you're in him but you're not in his will get your life in his will and and you'll be safe. That is the only name by which we must be saved. Amen. Amen. Well, to those of you that have been watching with us with Jonathan Kahn, you can obtain your own copy, Mystery of the Shemitah Unlocked. And uh, it's fascinating with all kinds of new material. Also the book, The Mystery of the Shemitah, and a DVD, The Mystery of the Seventh Cow, which we didn't even have time to discuss. <laughs> What's happening but since? Those three are available in a bundle package at a special price of forty nine ninety five plus shipping and handling. Call the 800 number on your screen or go to our website, prophecyinthenews.com. Our time is almost gone, but we want to say, as Jonathan was just Mm. telling you, the only safety, the only place of refuge is not in government. It's not in money. It's in the living God, the God of Israel, the God, Jesus Christ, who came and who is coming again. And we need to be ready to meet him. If you are not, we urge you to call on his name today. Plead for his mercy. And he who died on the cross for you and rose again, will forgive your sin and restore you and bring you into his family and his kingdom. And he is willing to save. What a wonderful, merciful God to all who look to him and trust in him. And those of us who know him, we await his return and we're looking up. 